Hello, party people. Today, I have some dinner inspiration for you. We're going to be asking the age-old question, what is for dinner? And I have eight answers for you and a dessert. If you didn't catch that, I have eight desserts. No, eight. <laughs> Apparently, I didn't catch it. I have eight dinner recipes and a dessert recipe to share with you. Of course, the dessert is like primo, is my favorite. But also, some recipes I haven't tried in a while, some new recipes, and uh, one favorite. So, I wanted to ask you, how often do you guys incorporate new dinner recipes into your weekly menu, monthly menu. How often do you try new recipes is what I'm trying to say. Because when I'm meal planning, I try to throw as much in as I can, mostly because of these videos. So first meal right there, sausage and quinoa stuffed zucchini. Oh, you guys, I had to pull this out of my old recipe book here. It is from eatingwell.com from July, August edition of 2014. Oh, what? <laughs> Did they even have a dot com back then? Way back in the Stone Age of 2014? Okay. So the very first thing I'm doing is just gutting the zucchinis. I don't know if that's the proper term. Gutting? God, that sounds like a scream movie. Okay. I'm taking the innards out. <laughs> just whatever. It doesn't matter. And the recipe doesn't really specify what to do with the insides of the zucchinis. I'm sure as heck not going to throw them away. So what I normally do, I used to make this recipe all the time, is I just cut them up into bite-sized pieces and then I throw it in with the you know sausage and vegetables. We'll get there. So what you want to do with the zucchini is salt and pepper it and then throw it in the microwave for about hmm, how many minutes? five minutes. I'm also reading the recipe in front of me. And while that zucchini is in the microwave, you want to brown your sausage. I also cut up an onion and a red bell pepper. I accidentally deleted the footage, but we can get on with our lives. And trust me, that's everything that's in the pot. The recipe actually calls for tomatoes, like baby tomatoes, whatever those are called. I'm trying to read the recipe here. Reading it. Cherry tomatoes, one cup of them. And I said, poof, I don't like tomatoes. So this is my kitchen. I make what I want. I I use dinner's recipes as like inspiration, as should you, okay? Um, I'm also throwing in some Italian seasoning because what is life without it? And I'm just letting the zucchini cook down. Everything else was really cooked. I'm just letting the zucchini cook down. So I threw the lid on it to steam it up for just a few minutes, just until it's tender and edible. And then I whipped up some white quinoa. Oh my gosh. So if you're not a huge fan of quinoa, try the white kind. I know they sell like a mixed colors, which is good too, but... The white kind uh, has the most mild flavor. I threw that in. I saved a little bit of it um, because I like to throw it on my salads and stuff. So, oh, and if just in case the kids wanted it without all the extra vegetables in it, I like to always reserve some for that, uh, which they enjoyed as well. So now I'm just filling the zucchini boats up. Zucchini boats. This is such a fun word. And you can fill the zucchini boats up with anything. You have taco meat, throw some taco meat on top of that. You have meatloaf, throw some meatloaf in there. <laughs> Any reason to eat zucchini. And so I filled them all up. I I wish I would have had more zucchini, but mm, I didn't. So I had a lot of filling left over. Need not worry. Need not worry. Who am I? What century am I living in? You needn't worry because that got eaten as well. <laughs> and the recipe also says throw Parmesan on top of that. Sprinkle some in. Throw it in the broiler for a few minutes. I think I had my oven going already. So I just threw it in like 400 for a while, 15 minutes or so, just until everything's nice and crispy. And this is so good. Such a simple meal idea recipe. So if you want to, oh my, just try it, okay? We're moving on to Huli Huli Chicken because my editing fingers, you know, I'm, I'm squeezing eight recipes well nine really in 35 minutes you're getting a jam-packed episode here okay oh hula hula chicken hula hula goodness hula on a minute <laughs> i'm pulling up the recipe you need half a cup of pineapple juice guess what i didn't have also never have canned pineapple so i did have some fresh and i just figured i'll just smash the crap up until it's nice and juicy which I think we're making a marinade here. So combine the pineapple juice half cup to half a cup brown sugar, one third cup ketchup, one third cup low sodium soy sauce. I use cocoa aminos and I had a little bit more. I just used the rest of the bottle. Guys, it doesn't even matter. That's why I don't measure. If I would have just dumped the bottle in, you know what I mean? Things work out. Um, also a third cup ketchup, just said that. Quarter teaspoon ground ginger, two teaspoons minced garlic and some chicken. 
I also wanted to mention the soy-free soy sauce I use, which is called Coco Aminos. That's why I use it. It's soy-free if you're interested in that. But it tastes exactly like soy sauce. You will be none the wiser. None. There it is again. None the wiser. What is with that word? Um, also, they have a gluten-free option. It's like right next to the soy sauce. You will know the difference your wallet will know the difference. That's the only difference, okay? Just the price. I threw frozen chicken in. Who cares? And then every time I walk back and forth into the fridge that day, I just give it a shake, you know, just to coat the chicken. And by the end of the day, it will be thawed out. You don't have to use frozen chicken. Let me make that clear. I didn't put frozen chicken on here in purpose. In per, I can't speak. I might as well just go lay down. Oh my gosh. Okay, speaking of putting things on pause, do you see that squirt? Um, guess where it went? Right in my eye! My eyes! <laughs> I said, oh my gosh! It burns! Uh, but I was fine. I just washed my eyes out. I need one of those, like, you know in science class you always had one of those eye washers? I need one of those. <laughs> I feel like stuff is always getting in my eyes. What am I doing on this clip? What am I doing? Okay, back to the recipe. <sighs> Huli, hooly goodness is what this is. If you have your life planned out, You can go ahead and put thawed chicken in. Chicken breast, chicken thighs, whatever you have. I cut mine in half because, goodness, they were enormous. Um, I'm just throwing it on the GFG. The George Foreman Grill, you know it's one of my favorites. It's my least favorite to wash. I will say that. It is a pain in the rear. Also, I couldn't find my drip tray, so you work with what you have. (laughs) You know what I mean? Um, But this chicken was really good. It had that Hawaiian burst of flavor with the pineapple and... I had the sugar of soy sauce. What else was in it? I don't know. It was really good, even better with leftovers. And I just served it with some sweet potatoes. I don't remember how I cooked them. You know what? I probably did it in the microwave because I am PO'd at my instant pot <laughs> right now. We're, all, we're taking a break from each other, okay? And then I'm sure I've got some veggies. I see some broccoli back there. Ooh, some cauliflower. Yes. I even think I used leftover rice. We had some in the fridge. So again, the main dish was the huli huli chicken, and I'm just throwing whatever else we had, probably frozen broccoli. It took 10 minutes to throw everything together, and dinner is served a boon appetit. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so there it is. Huli huli. Everything looks nicer when it's been grilled. If you have a real grill, man, throw it on that. We have a charcoal grill, and I just don't have time for that. You know what I mean? I just don't, not, not tonight. Anyway, here's bro- here's broccoli eating some Meredith. Yep. That's how it's stated. I need to figure out my words. I need to maybe write a script. Maybe that will help. Who doesn't love watching a baby eat? All right, moving on. P.F. Chang's Mongolian beef copycat recipe. And for a second, you know, I I do have some minor skills in the kitchen. I have a minor skill set in my brain telling me I know I'm supposed to cut against the grain, but I spent about 20 minutes trying to figure out which way the grain was. <laughs> Oh, I was having a hard time, having a hard day, hard life. (laughs) So I figured it out. Even if it's not right, I just started cutting anyway. Who stinking cares? So this recipe is also pretty um, simple because in my head, I always thought recipes like this were so much more advanced and you needed so many more skills than what I have acquired. Uh, Just, you know in my from my knowledge watching food network <laughs> my entire life but lo and behold no skill involved at all okay so you cut you take your cut beef i don't know what kind i had i just had beef i bought the wrong kind i needed a different kind but this is what i had london broil i think that's probably wrong i just threw in some cornstarch how much do you need cornstarch I'm not even looking at the right recipe. A quarter cup of cornstarch. I didn't measure. Hello, have you met me? I just threw in a few uh, spoonfuls. Four tablespoons is a quarter cup, if you need to know that, okay? And I don't really know what I'm doing here with this oil, and I'm putting some seasonings in, uh, some ginger, some minced garlic, which I didn't have. I had powdered garlic, and two teaspoons of vegetable oil. Oh, we're making the sauce. That's what we're making. It's like I... You know, it's like I didn't even make this. How much soy sauce do we need? A half a cup of soy sauce. There you go. And just like that, I didn't need to measure. Did you see that? It was basically the rest of the bottle. That's why I don't measure things. A three quarters cup of brown sugar. Ooh, that's what makes this sauce so good. Very, very good. And I will say, 
I said it last time I did one of these videos. I have not ever been to P.F. Chang's or oh, what's the other place called? Panda something. I've never been there. I don't eat out much, guys. It's like I'm missing out on life, all these copycat recipes. However, the end result of this meal was fantastic, and it tasted like takeout but better because it wasn't takeout and it didn't have all of that gunk in it. So right now, you see me cutting the green beans, a process I like to call, man, I don't feel like lining these up. Just chop it. <laughs> Just chop it. Um, I'm cutting my green beans. I feel like my kids eat them more when they're in smaller pieces. I enjoy them more when I don't have to like, open my wide trap and do you know what I mean like just smaller pieces in general it's just nicer especially if you're making this as like a nice romantic meal you know it's always weird I'm like the worst eater if you see me eat okay TMI so moving on we're gonna cook up the meat and I think I have like 20 minutes of me cooking this meat up so into the pan you have some oil some oil as Paula Dean calls it a cup and a half which seems like a lot and it is a lot, but you know, it doesn't soak all up. So I guess there's that. Is this a healthy recipe? Just because you're eating green beans? I like to say yes. <laughs> all right. You just, I don't know. What's the term for cooking it in oil? You just cook it in oil until it's done. A couple minutes on each side, no skill involved at all again. And I put it on some paper towels just to get some, some excess grease off. Okay. There's a nice shot of it cooking. And then when it's all done, you throw the sauce right on top of it just to heat it through. And I think we thickened the sauce up with some cornstarch as well. Or maybe we didn't. Maybe it was just a thick consistency. We also added water. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. I will link all of the recipes down below in case you want to print them out from the original source. Just fantastic recipes that I find. You know what I mean? When I'm meal planning, I just go crazy. Uh, okay, so to serve this on the table, you guys know how I feel like I don't want to waste. Oh, there's the Instant Pot rice. Oh, that Instant Pot makes me feel a certain way. I put the green beans just in the bowl that I had the sauce in. It's like, why, why am I going to dirty another dish? There's the finished product. And if that doesn't look gourmet, you need to get your eyes checked. All right? Unless you don't like meat or beef or Mongolian beef in this case, or green beans or rice. Next up, <laughs> we have bacon-wrapped pork. I don't have a printed recipe for this because I just kind of used inspiration. My main inspiration was from, I have a trifecta of seasonings right here. Uh, season, seasoning salt, oil, onion. Gosh, can I talk? And then what did I have? Garlic. So inspiration from this, I really wanted, I think it's from Outback or Carabas or Olive Garden. I, those restaurants they're all a chain they like all work together so I'll link like a photo of it below or something but I have it every time I'm pregnant I'm not pregnant right now that I know of <laughs> don't start the rumor mill but it's like bacon wrapped pork medallions oh my god it is so good makes my mouth water and I thought yeah I, I want to recreate that and I felt like I had the skill set for it it was it perfect? No. But was it my favorite meal that I made this week? Heck yes, it was. So I seasoned all that up, added some brown sugar, because that's what makes it so delicious. Anything, if you add bacon and brown sugar, I mean, come on. Really, unless you're allergic to one or two of those things, you can't go wrong. So I wrapped it up in bacon, and I think in the restaurant, they must cut it before they cook it, because... Oh, no, you know what it is? The sauce. That was the main difference. But we'll get there. I'm cutting, I'm dicing up an onion for the sauce because the sauce that they have is a fig and uh, balsamic vinegar sauce. Oh, my gosh. That, that's gourmet. I could not eat. I don't have balsamic vinegar in my kitchen. I don't have figs. I thought, gosh, we're in the middle of a pandemic. I just can't run to the grocery store whenever I feel like it. So... I tried to work with what I had. I'm cutting up the veggies right now. And you know what? Double up on the onion business. I only did half because I only needed half an onion for the sauce. If you're recreating this and like onions, oh, I love carrots and onions. I forgot how much I loved carrots and onions. I just seasoned my veg up with oil, salt, pepper, my trifecta, throw it in the oven with the cooking meat probably around 400, I think I did 375 or 400 for as long as it's done. I don't know. The meat took a while, probably around... 30 minutes or so 
until it was all the way cooked through. Um, okay, so I'm trying to recreate this sauce with my skill set. Again, very low on the cooking scale. <laughs> so I thought, oh, let me add some honey. Let me add some currant. Then I don't recreate this sauce. Don't try to make your own unless you have figs and balsamic vinegar. Oh, magnifique. Do we see that? Bacon wrapped pork. And then there's the veggies. But I will say, this was my favorite meal. I didn't use the sauce that I made. I used as a sauce the drippings from the bacon and the pork. My arteries are probably mad at me, but my heart is happy. Well, my heart health is not happy. <laughs> my mind is happy. My taste buds are happy. That's it. Punch me in the face. Taste buds are so good. I also serve this alongside some uh, leftover rice that we had. And I always serve rice with, there's the sauce. Oh, I'm drooling. Doesn't that just look so <laughs> greasy? I didn't put too much on, but enough to flavor it, and you will not regret yourself. You can also use some sweet chili sauce. Again, I served it. My kids really like uh, that seaweed paper, so sometimes they put like the rice and the meat on top of that, and they love doing that. It's like they're making their own meal, you know? So, um, oh, what I love to do with leftovers, if I have them, and this night I had plenty. Do you see this? I, leftover trays for lunch I mean does it get any easier than that there's the sauce oh in my gravy boat with the sticker still on <laughs> so, I did wash it okay I did wash it but so good I couldn't get enough of this guys I wish I could I would have just made it for lunch like so I could have five meals five lunch meals instead of sharing it with everyone for dinner time <laughs> It was that good. Brownie Friday, we made some cookie dough brownies. Um, so I've been putting this off because at first glance, you're like, oh, that doesn't look too good. Guys, these taste divine. Two things I love, brownies and cookie dough in one dish. How could I refrain? So if you are making brownies, try this. Jazz up your brownies. What am I adding? I have, oh, I halved the recipe. So the recipe is for a 9 by 13 dish. I halved it. So if you're interested in knowing the half measurements, it's half a cup of margarine, but I did butter. I melted that. Uh, one cup of sugar and half of one third cup. I had to Google it. So I'll save you from doing that. It's two tablespoons plus two teaspoons. So I did that with the cocoa powder. I added two eggs and then we're adding two-thirds cup of flour, half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of vanilla, and I don't really measure that stuff. I just did a pinch. Avelina is helping me. She's mixing and adding the salt. Just again, a pinch. And then some vanilla I think she adds as well. Oh, and there she is adding the flour. So this is the brownie part. If you don't want to make this part, if you want to skip this step, I mean, it only took a few minutes. Well, maybe longer because I had my kids helping me mix and stuff. But it doesn't take long. Very few ingredients for a, um, for what I do, an 8 by 8 pan of brownies. And look at that. I use my measuring cup to mix in. My new measuring cup that I got from Target. Oh, my gosh. From, what's her name? Chrissy, Chrissy Teigen's line, my dough whisk, the measuring cup. I feel like a new woman in the kitchen. It's, it's just fantastic. Okay. So, I mean, I should have got a better bowl or a bigger bowl because a better bowl doesn't exist. And two, a better bowl, wait, a better bowl doesn't exist, a bigger bowl because it was hard to mix in that. Okay. I'm dumping it in a greased pan. You guys know, if you've seen me make brownies once, you've seen me make them a hundred times, but these are different. Hold tight. I'm giving you know we lick the spoon around here okay let me know if you guys lick the spoon honestly that's my favorite part of the brownies am I wrong I mean sometimes the batter tastes better than the brownies I'm just saying although brownie batter can be a little different because Ghirardelli brownie mix the best brownie mix batter but some bra some box brownie mixes don't taste so good okay so moving on to the d cookie dough layer I'm drooling. I want this so bad. So again, three quarters cup of butter, but I halved this. So I'm going to give you the half measurements. Six tablespoons of butter, six tablespoons of sugar, six tablespoons of brown sugar. You whip that up. And by whip, I really wanted to use my dough whisk. That's what this is, the Dutch dough whisk. It's like heaven. It, I, I feel like a homemaker, really. You know what I mean? Everything tastes better when you mix it by hand. Is that true? That's just what I tell myself. Okay. And then I'm having, I think Eleanor is mixing it, adding a pinch of salt. She's probably going to also add the vanilla extract. I think Wentworth is actually going to do that. And then uh, the flour. So you need half a cup of flour, two-thirds cup of milk, 
And if you want to, on top, add some fudge, hot fudge. I did not do that. I feel like I did not want to ruin this dish with some hot fudge. Also, I didn't have any, so I just told myself. If you did have it, it would ruin the dish. <laughs> so if you've never made cookie dough like this before, like edible cookie dough, because you do not have to cook this. The brownies right now are in the oven cooking, and I'm making the top layer for when, they're come out, when they come out and they're co- cool. So if you've never made edible cookie dough before, I highly recommend it. It's something that I have to forget in my memory that I know how to do or that recipes like this exist because I will eat raw cookie dough, not raw cookie, there's no egg in it, it's edible. I will eat edible cookie dough by the handful. Oh, it's so good, so good. Okay, I need to calm down because literally salivation is happening. Okay, spreading this on wasn't the easiest. Also, I feel like I could have halved the brownie recipe but kept the cookie dough recipe full because that's really the best part of this. Am I right? When I was spreading it, I thought, this is too thin of a layer. We need a thicker layer. So there's my recommendation for you. Double up on the cookie dough layer. Also grab a spoon because you're not going to have, you're not going to be able to refrain yourself from taking a few bites. That's how good it is. And there's the finished product. No. Does it look Pinterest quality? No. But does it taste better than anything you've ever eaten in your entire existence of life except for that bacon wrapped pork? Yes. Yes, it does. (laughs) It's very good. And I really have been enjoying these new brownie recipes. Everyone in the house has. So um, it's really cool that we're doing this. So I encourage you to try up a new, you know, dessert recipe as well. See if your family enjoys it. So there it is. All the finished product. Ooh. Does that make you happy or what? Just brownie. And the brownie layer, delicious. The best homemade brownies probably I've ever had. Okay, enough about the brownies. We're moving on to Tuscan garlic chicken pasta. Let me see if I have that recipe here. All right. Oh, this has been on my meal plan for months. That's a lot of garlic seasoning. But it's not garlic salt. It's garlic seasoning. Apparently, it wasn't enough because I'm throwing in some more. And then I have some pepper and salt. The recipe says oregano, basil. I, you know, I just have Italian seasoning in my pantry. Maybe I need to branch out. Maybe that's the next thing I need to do. You know what the problem is? I don't have a good system to store my seasonings. Okay, so here is a magic trick, guys. Are you ready? Do you see that? The tenderloin. It just flew right out of that little chicken tender. I didn't know about this hack. Someone shared it on Instagram. I can't remember who. But they just... What do you see it? It just flies right out. I had to have Alex do it because my fingers are really weak and I just couldn't figure it out. Try as I may. And by the end of this video, I do figure it out. Um, I needed like, uh, what is that? Friction on my fingers. So once my fingers were like coated in the breading, that did the trick for me. Okay. Uh, anyway, isn't that an amazing hack right there? That trick? To pull that little chewy tenderloin out? I just thought that was the coolest thing. So I mixed all that flour and seasoning together. And I'm just throwing it in some oil. This is the leftover oil from the Mongolian beef. I I store it. I save that stuff. I don't want to waste it. Throw it in the garbage. And definitely don't throw it down your drain. Ruin it. There I am trying. Because I don't give up. I'm very persistent when it comes to pretty much everything in my life. (laughs) I never give up. Persistence is key. That's what my husband says all the time. Persistence is key. So I did it. Do you see it? Do you see that? I I was so excited. I was like, "Uh, yes, here it is. A little piece of crap. Tenderloin. Got it out of there. Oh, so proud of myself. All right. I'm flipping the chicken. And then I I de-tenderloin. I don't even know what it's called. That little cartilage what have I been calling it this whole time I took the cartilage out whatever it's called you guys saw me do it (laughs) is the volume even up are you (laughs) listening so you're just supposed to brown the meat and then throw it in the oven I, I pretty much cooked mine through so I just threw mine in the oven to keep it warm now we're working on the sauce of the Tuscan garlic chicken um it calls for a red bell pepper I had an orange one so it's like tomato tomato kind of thing and then you're supposed to throw in some uh, cornstarch two and a half tablespoons of cornstarch that's to thicken the sauce up and then you know you had oil in the pan from cooking the bell pepper you soften the bell pepper then add the cornstarch then add chicken broth half a cup if you don't have that add water guys it's no big deal um and some whipping cream half a cup of that as well and you're mixing that with some cornstarch 
what was that? A tablespoon or two? I wasn't watching. I was reading the recipe. Uh, so you mix that together. And but wait, hold off. Don't add it yet. I'm cutting some spinach up because I've done this before where I didn't cut the spinach and then you have like, you know, really long pieces of spinach. I've learned my lesson from the past, okay? You live, you learn, you cut your spinach. Um, and then you add a cup of milk. I have almond milk and that worked just beautifully. Use whatever milk you have. And then you mix that up. Then you add the whipped cream mixture, the whipped cream and cornstarch mixture. And that's what makes your sauce nice and thick and rich and ooh -hoo -hoo. I'm not a huge fan of that kind of sauce. I ate it, obviously. Alex said it was the best. Oh, gosh. And even more. To make it even more rich, even richer, you add a cup of Parmesan cheese. I use my hand as a measuring cup. Yes, it is exact. And I have shaved Parmesan cheese from, what is that, Target? I... <laughs> I tried to get a shot of it, how it looked on the website, how the, like the professional photographers took a picture of it. Guys, it just, it's just kind of ridiculous. I was laughing at myself. So there's what it looks like when I actually ate it, much like it would look when you're actually eating it as well. Nice and mixed together. And personally, I think that looks a little better. So a little more appetizing. I made a ton of chicken. So I had a lot left over. And you will see that in the coming meals. I definitely used it up. Just like this one. It is baked chicken flautas. Uh, newsflash, pretty sure this is not a flauta. <laughs> but you know, we're just going to roll with it. Okay, I had all that leftover chicken, you guys. All of that. That's so much chicken. So um, I'm gathering all my ingredients. Only needs a few ingredients, okay? And instead of cooking a new batch of chicken and shredding it, I just shred the leftover chicken. You can use a rotisserie chicken if you have that as well. Use whatever you have on hand. If you don't have chicken, use beans. I'm sure that would be just as filling and delicious as well, like a white bean, any kind of white bean. So here we are making the sauce. One stick of softened cream cheese, one can of corn drained, um, and then I have a black bean can of corn drained, canned of corn, black beans, yep. And then one cup of salsa verde. I, again, I don't measure. One cup of cheese as well. Just a good handful, guys, a hearty handful. And as soon as I started mixing and smelling that salsa, I thought, oh, we need more of that because it just smells divine. Man, that smells so good. And you don't need any other seasonings. I mean, you could if you wanted to add some cumin or add uh, some spice, maybe some kind of sauce, T hot taco sauce, sriracha sauce, that would be, oh my gosh, green chilies would be fantastic in here. I almost filled up the tortillas with just that mixture and forgot the chicken. Ha ha, good thing I remembered. My brain works sometimes. So you add four cups of chicken to that. I left a little bit. If I was only making this dish, I would have just added all the chicken. Who cares? Four cups, five cups, it's all the same. You want to make more, you want to make some less, it doesn't matter. So um, I will show you what I'm doing with the reserved chicken again. So that's like the bonus recipe, you know? Not really a recipe, more of an, uh, an idea. So I'm filling up all the tortillas with the filling. And I mean, I have flour tortillas. You could use whole wheat. You could use, what are those? Corn tortillas. And I feel like the corn tortillas is what a real flauta is made of. You know what? Okay, story time. I went to this restaurant. It used to be my favorite restaurant, Don Pablo's. If you have a Don Pablo's near you, can you eat some of it for me and let me know how delicious it is? So my favorite restaurant is there. My favorite meal was the chicken flautas, and they had this like orange sauce. I don't even know. Last time I had it, I was probably like 12 years old many, many years ago, but it still makes me salivate because it's so good. And then a huge side of salad. Oh my gosh, I just, someone build a Don Pablo's near me so I can have that meal again, or give me a copycat recipe so I can try my best to recreate it. This definitely isn't it. Is this, was this good? Did my family love it and gobble it up? Heck yeah, they did. There's the finished product. I did half with cheese. My family really enjoyed the cheese on it. I was going to put it on a fancy platter from Easter, but I didn't because who needs to wash dishes? Okay, not me. Anyway, my family enjoyed the cheese on top rather than cheeseless, but you know, there's that. You know, you can't please them all is what I like to say. Shredded chicken, sweet tomato. Tomato? Yeah. Yeah. That's our next meal. <laughs> I threw my sweet potatoes in the oven because I thought I usually cook them in the microwave. doesn't take that long. 
I thought, you know what, let me throw them in the oven, see if they're any better. They're not any better, and it takes like 20 times longer. They were in the oven for two, I want to say maybe even four hours <laughs> at like three fit. Man, it's so hot. I'm testing. How hot? How long can I keep my fingers on? Not long at all. <laughs> I threw them in the oven probably at 375 for two hours. That's probably accurate right there. And um, yeah, I'm just keeping them hot in the tin foil while I made the rest of the dinner. Hot sauce. Oh, great. And then ranch dressing. If you don't have ranch dressing, use like cream cheese or something to cut the spiciness of the hot sauce. Although I will say I really like it spicy. Frank's red hot Hot sauce is like the best. Put that crap on everything, right? That's how the commercial goes. I don't know if that still rings true because I haven't seen a commercial in decades. Actually, years, really, because of YouTube. I don't see commercials ever. Okay. I'm throwing that chicken into the sweet potato. And, you know, you can use anything. Barbecue sauce if you have it. You can top it any way you want with bacon, with red onion. I'm putting some sauerkraut on the side. Oh my heavens, this was so good. And I was very skeptical. I was like, chicken and hot sauce with a sweet potato? What the heck? That's so weird. Guys, it was so good. Try it, try it, try it. Please try it. So good. Moving on to the chicken sausage and veggie bake. It's not the official name of it, but that's what I call it because I am creative. (laughs) So... Oh, man, I put the recipe down, and now I forgot what I'm making. Oh, okay, okay, that's what I'm making. This is one of my favorite recipes, and I've shared it with you before. It's so versatile, so simple to make. I, the, I'm i using the veggies that I had in my fridge that I, quote, need to use up but really need to eat, right, because they're vegetables and they're so good for us. I've got some carrots. What else do I have? Brussels sprouts. I, I forgot what else. Potatoes, I think that's the, those are the three that I used. If I had two sheet pans... I would have made two pans of this. This, I love, one, making this for dinner because it's really simple and easy, no skill involved at all kind of dish. You just throw a bunch of stuff on a sheet pan. Very minimal cleanup. It's delicious. Mainly because of the chicken sausage that I'm using and am obsessed with lately, which is the kind from Costco. I mean, they sell it everywhere, but I buy it at Costco. And it is... The sweet chicken sausage. I can't remember exactly the name, but it is so delicious. It tastes like Thanksgiving to me. It has like a certain flavor about it. Oh my goodness in heaven. It is so good. If you have never tried chicken sausage before, I really encourage you to try this type, this kind that I'm making. I'll try to link it below. It is, or the name of it at least. So good. I could eat the chicken sausage on its own. Oh, the recipe calls for four links, I think. Four? Are you kidding? I think I used eight or nine because that's the best part of this recipe. Um, and plus, I felt like, I well, I have a lot of veggies here. I could double up on the meat, <laughs> on the meat business. So that's exactly what I did. I love having this. Uh, I think I explained that as leftovers for lunch the next day and the day after because it's so simple. So I'm just throwing everything on the sheet pan. Like I said, very minimal effort. There I am cutting up some more because I thought I need more meat, right? More meat, please. Olive oil, salt and pepper. You guys know, very simple trifecta. But the kicker is you, well, okay, really you can use any seasoning that you want. You should know that by now. But the recipe calls for poultry seasoning and it just gives it that little oomph Kicks it, oh, there it is. It kicks it up a little, why did I leave that in? Kicks it up a little bit. I probably forgot to delete that. Whoops. All right, and I just sprinkle it on top just a little bit. You don't have to go crazy. Oh, look at me, I am going crazy. Adding garlic seasoning, who am I? I'm so fancy. I used to add like real garlic that's just crushed, you know, but I didn't have any cloves on hand. So I'm just using seasonings. That's what they're there for. Use them if you have them. Otherwise, they go bad. You have to throw them away when you look at the expiration dates and you're like, wow, how long has this been in my pantry? Okay, so (laughs) there it is. Throw it into your oven. Oh, here I am pointing at the green beans. I wanted to add green beans, but I did not have room. Oh, Oh, and then that night, that, that is the night I ordered a second sheet pan. My sheet pans are 21 inches by 15 inches. Love it. I'll also link my Amazon store below if you're still here. If you want the sheet pan, I'll link that crap below because I get a lot of questions. Where'd you get your sheet pans? Well, Michael's or Amazon if your Michael's is not open. And I've had my sheet pan for years and years and years and years. It's a Wilton. It is still good, still kicking. It has not warped. So there, I'm packing lunches for the next day. 
And that is it. Wow, eight meals and one dessert later. Are you still here? Thank you so much if you are. I hope I gave you some great meal inspiration ideas. I hope I you know, inspired you. Maybe I know we're cooking more from home, which is fantastic. Uh, healthier meals into our bellies, into our families. I hope you gather together as a family during dinner time. That is one of the most special times for us as a family. It's when we all know everyone will be there. Everyone will be present. It's a no phone zone. You know what I mean? Okay. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this week of dinners. And if you did, make sure to subscribe, stick around, put a little happy in your day, and I will see you next time. Bye.